Hello, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be walking you through the 20 books that I would keep if I were only keeping 20 books. Now, I thought of this idea recently because I was adding some books to my shelves. I was kind of trying to think of what books I wanted to purchase that I had read that I'd really loved. And I had to kind of like think, okay, did I love this book or did I just kind of like this book? And like, you know, sometimes it's hard to know what we need and what we don't need. And I mean, none of this is really a need. None of this is really a need. But it did get me thinking, okay, if I were only keeping 20 of the books that I own, what books would I keep? What is the most important to me? Is it sentimentality? Is it special editions? Is it all of my favorite books by one author? Like what would be most important to me? So I selected 20 books that in my opinion of all of the books I own are the most important to me, the books that I would be really sad if I didn't have with me. And I just think that's kind of a fun experiment. I also challenge myself to only actually pick one book per author. So no, I don't have like all of Sarah J. Mass's backlist here. I just have, like I said, one book from every author. Variety of genres, um, some special editions, some not. So I don't know, I just thought it'd be kind of a fun little thing to do. This was kind of challenging and I'll kind of talk, talk you through why. So first up is a, a challenging one for me. That is actor Age Eve Brown. I had a really hard time actually deciding between this one and take a hint Danny Brown because both of these are just some of my favorite contemporary romances of all time. I absolutely loved both of these books. I think Talia Hibbert just has such a way of writing her heroines that really connects with me. If I were going off of like just a I connect with this heroine like 100% sort of vibe, I would probably have picked take a hint Danny Brown. But when it comes to like relationships, dynamic. I think Eve Brown maybe has <laughs> Danny Brown beat a little bit. I just love Jacob and Eve in this story. I love the way that they love each other. I love that this book was hot and sexy as well. And I just like seeing a heroine kind of figure her life out in a story. It seems like sometimes we'll have a heroine come into a story not knowing what she wants to do with her life and then you end the story at the same place but she just has a boyfriend now. And I don't love that but in Eve Brown she really like figures her shit out and she has a supportive partner to kind of like help her get there as well. I just love this book. I'd be really sad if I didn't have this on my shelf. And this is a book that I just know that I'm going to be revisiting time and time again. So I just, I, this is, this is one of my top picks for sure. <laughs> I think one of the only historical romances on this list or on this list in this pile in front of me <laughs> is A Kingdom of Dreams by Judith McNaught. I, I picked this one out because this one is a step back, which I think can be sometimes kind of hard to come by for some of these or older historical romances. This book I just loved again because of the heroine. I think that's what sets a lot of historical romances apart for me. I loved the relationship dynamic, honestly, between Jennifer and Royce. This is an older historical, so there might be a little bit of toxicity here in the relationship dynamic, but he is a really strong alpha hero who just bends so easily for Jennifer. And this is sort of like my first exploration into older historicals that I really like vibed with and gelled with. And it just kind of taught me that like there are a lot of historicals out there that were written a long time ago that like, while they might have elements that aren't always perfect, there are story elements that I think we have kind of forgotten in modern times, if, if you will. I think the historicals written in like the 90s and before tend to be more rich in historical details. Yeah, I don't know. I just think there's something to be said about an older historical romance. Again, they're not without problem, but I just really loved this book. And this is a book that, again, I like know that I would see as like a warm hug if I picked it up like amongst all of the books that I have in front of me. Next up is another uh, mass market paperback, which is interesting because I always like moan about how I don't like mass markets. And that's mostly true, but sometimes books just don't come in other forms. Case in point, Lover Awakened by J.R. Ward. This is one that I would keep for so many different reasons. Okay, first off, I don't love mass markets, but the hardcover version of this, I think goes for like $600. I am fine with having the mass market of this one. This honestly, when I was kind of looking at my vampire romance collection and like thinking about what kind of paranormal stuff I would keep because that's a very important subgenre to me. This one was just like an instant. This, this is it for me. Lover Awakened by J.R. Ward is the third book in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series, which follows a band of vampire warriors who kind of protect their own uh, people against this army of um, kind of demonic creatures, soulless humans, I guess you could say. And Sadist is... I wouldn't say a soft hero, but he definitely got me interested in kind of non-traditional slash damaged heroes. Really like this book. It's a kind of a hard read, I would say. There are definitely like graphic scenes of abuse in here, but he is one of the most transformed and triumphant heroes I think I've ever read. And I really loved his love interest, Bella, as well. This book is, I would say, not only like important to me because I love vampire romances and I love paranormal in general, because this series was what got me into romance in the first place. Would be really sad if I didn't have a J.R. Ward book on my shelves. I have a ton 
one behind me actually I've been trying to collect some of her uh, hardcovers but you know I'm never gonna have a hardcover of this one and this one's probably by far my favorite so <laughs> definitely one that I would need to keep on my shelves and I guess following that up this is the only other I believe vampire romance that I have and it is Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead this one I would keep for so many different reasons I think this was my first foray into age gap romances which I found that I really like I also just really like a school setting for a story which is something that I didn't really know until I read Vampire Academy. I love Rose. Again, she is like a really strong heroine. I think I'm, I'm seeing a theme here. I really appreciate strong heroines in my stories and I would keep this particular version of this book. I have two because this was the first one that I ever uh, got. The pages are kind of yellowing at this point but this is what I read when I was in like, I don't know, middle school and it just means a lot to me to be able to like still have this book on my shelves. I had a fairly good sized collection of books growing up but unfortunately a lot of those either got donated or got lost and I don't really have a lot of books remaining from my childhood that like were my first edition like copy of that book and Vampire Academy is one that I have managed to hold on to for many years so it's just really special to have this one and also it's just a fun story. I have revisited this time and again and I just I just still think it's fun. Um, I'm sad that the show was kind of a flop and that it got canceled but I always have the book and the book is <laughs> the book is a fun one. Next up is okay I don't, want, I don't want to speak too soon, but I think it's the only other historical romance that I have in my stack, and it is The Governess Game by Tessa Dare, specifically the hardcover Avon edition. I love these Avon hardcover editions of historical romances. I think they're so stunning. It's like each author has their own aesthetic. I don't know if you've noticed this in general, but a lot of authors, especially romance authors, have their own fonts that they like to use, especially for author name. And I've noticed that all of Tessa Dare's books look like this, whether it's a hardcover or a paperback, but um, I'm glad that I have the hardcovers because they just hold up a little bit better over time. The Governess Game is a historical romance with a, <laughs> a heroine who is a little bit of a wallflower and a hero that's a little bit of a rake, but he is taking care of two young girls. They are kind of under his care. They're his nieces or something like that. He needs a governess to take care of them, and she is obviously the governess. She, I believe, is into like astrology? No, astronomy. <laughs> I believe she's like really into stars or something like that, and he's very supportive of her dreams, and I don't It's just, it's one of my favorite romances in general, and also just one of my favorite historical romances, and I think I would be really sad if I didn't have this one. It's one that I feel like I need to reread soon because I just remember swooning and I don't know if I cried, but I do remember just like absolutely falling in love with the story. Tessa Dare is a really fun historical romance author to like dip your toes into the water if you were curious about historical romance. And this one, you know, definitely spoke to me. Another book that has spoken to me is Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. I still need to take the Target sticker off of it. Actually, I don't even know. Where did that book go? I realized recently that I have two copies of this, so that was a bit of an oversight on my part buying two copies of this. So I'm actually going to be giving one of these copies away. So <laughs> link your Instagram handle in the comments down below if you are interested in me sending you a copy of this book. But Part of Your World is one of my favorite new books that I've read. Uh, this is, I think, honestly, this might be my favorite book that I read in 2023. This is, in my opinion, a perfect romance. It is just so wholeheartedly romantic. It is about Alexis and Daniel. Alexis is a doctor. Daniel is a guy living in a small town and it's sort of like a fish out of water, opposites attract sort of situation because it's, you know, she's a little older than him. She just doesn't know how she can make this relationship work but he is there to support her along the way as she deals with some of the harder things in her life, like escaping an emotionally abusive relationship and um, also dealing with some other potentially uh, rough relationships in her life. There are definitely triggers in this book. I definitely looked them up before picking it up, but this book is just so heartfelt. It made me cry. It made me swoon. I loved the romance and the romance did feel sexy, but really the focus here was on kind of the, the growth of the characters and how they could support each other. And I just loved it. I ate it up. Again, one of my favorite romances of all time and also one of my favorite romances of last year. So this is one that I feel like I'd be really sad if I didn't have. All right, next up we have Valiant by Holly Black. This one was really tough for me because I really like Holly Black. Obviously, she's one of my favorite authors in general and also like favorite YA authors specifically. There's not a lot of like YA authors that I love and just not a lot of YA that I pick up in general these days, but Holly Black doesn't matter what she publishes, like I'll pick it up. Valiant is the book that I selected. I was between this and The Cruel Prince, obviously. Valiant was the book that really got me into Holly's work in the first place and it was, again, kind of one of the things that got me into romance. <laughs> and I think when I was looking at my shelves, I was like, wow, it's interesting to see kind of the stepping stones of like how I got into romance over the years but Valiant there is a relationship in here between like a troll I guess you could say and a human girl that he ends up helping out. I just remember there's like one specific scene in here where they're like making out. I just remember thinking like oh my god people make out in books. What? Like I need more books like this. I just loved this world when I was growing up. I have all three of the books on my shelves in these sort of little paperback um, editions. There's also you know what I could have I guess cheated and, and gotten the big bind up of the modern fairy tales out. It's the same thing. It's all three of the books kind of in one collection. This is the one that has the most meaning to me. If you're unfamiliar with the series, it 
is the kind of prelude, I guess you could say, or the precursor to the Cruel Prince series, is set in sort of a similar world, but these focus more on the human aspect of things. Think of if Jude were living in the human world but was coming into contact with Faye, rather than like being immersed in the Faye world and occasionally visiting the human world. This one I just loved the most out of all of them, and again, it was kind of like uh, just one of, the, one of the stepping stones for me for romance, so I would always, always, always want to keep this book. Trucking along in the romance vein, and there's obviously going to be a lot of romance in the stack because that's the majority of what I read. Uh, we have a newer pick, and that is Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. By far my favorite Allie Hazelwood book. I don't want to spoil anything, but I did like this more than her newest book. Um, I, I liked Love Hypothesis. I liked her newest book, but this is just, this one's my favorite. Give me a pen pal romance anytime. Okay, this is not like a true pen pal romance, but there is secret identity through online communication that I just really vibed with, and I just love the relationship dynamic between the hero and heroine. He really saw things in her that no one else really saw. He was supportive of her career aspirations. He didn't mind the fact that she wore galaxy print leggings. I don't know. There, there's a lot that could be said about this book, and I've talked about it at length, but this is one of my favorite contemporaries. It's one that has made me swoon. When I'm thinking about books that like I want to keep and the books that mean the most to me, it's usually the books that either have a really emotional punch to them or books that just make me smile and giggle and like and just make me want to flip the pages like as quickly as possible to get to the next scene so yeah this is one that I would definitely have to keep. Switching gears a little bit so we don't talk about too many romances in a row we have Amari and the Knight Brothers by B.B. Alston. As I was looking on my shelves this one just kept jumping out to me. I wasn't sure if I'd pick it because I don't think I've really talked about this book very much on my channel and it's a book that I've only read once but when I was thinking about middle grade stories and stories that really were just fun to read. This book really tops the list. This book was so well crafted. I loved the fantasy world. I loved that our heroine was really like on a mission to find her brother and she was also just trying to kind of like make her way in this new fantastical world that she was becoming a part of. It's got kind of a school setting that I really love and I... <sighs> I really need to reread this soon, honestly, because this is one of those books that's just, it's very feel good. It's one that I could see myself reading time and time again if I only had 20 books. All right, back to romance. <laughs> Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas. I don't feel like I need to talk about this book any more than I already have. This is a true pen pal romance, sort of like friends to enemies to friends to lovers, or just like friends to enemies to lovers. I love this relationship dynamic. This book encompasses a lot of <laughs> what I wanted when I was a younger person. I'm not saying that I would want this relationship dynamic now. I'm not saying this is the healthiest romance I've ever read. I mean, it's bully romance is it really going to be. But Punk 57 follows Misha and Ryan. Misha's the guy, Ryan's the girl, and they've been friends via like writing pen pal situation for a very long time and they've promised that they're never going to meet each other in real life. That kind of all changes one day when one of them accidentally sees the other at a party and that person is not really who they thought they were. And so that creates kind of an interesting relationship dynamic as um, they're kind of having to learn their, I guess, true identities and true personalities in real life. Love the feeling of this book. This book to me feels like my middle school experience. Not that I had any relationships like this, but the kind of like swoopy haired guy in a band sort of thing. Just everything about this was what I wanted when I was young and getting to like read something so cathartic as an adult. I think the first time I read this I was like fresh out of college or like maybe it was my senior year. Not entirely sure, but this one it just hit so hard for me and it's one that I don't think I will ever let go of. I love this book and I'm sure at some point it's probably gonna get recovered. This is iconic. This is giving me like 2008 like scene kid era, so <laughs> have to keep that one. Another book that I have to keep is one that just really scratched an itch for me, and it is Dear Ava by Elsa Madden Mills. This is one that I like really hyped after I read it because I feel like it wasn't getting the love that it deserves. I think mostly because the cover just doesn't really tell you much about the book. This one is not a pen pal romance, although the hero does write our heroine some like secret messages or letters, but for me the, the reason that I would keep this book. It's not necessarily the story itself, which I do, I do really like. It's a, it's a high school romance mostly between a girl who has been bullied and assaulted and a hero who is trying to help her find her attacker. Um, so it's kind of like a hard-hitting book, but the reason honestly that I would keep this book is because of one particular scene. There's a scene in here where the hero is just steeped in self-loathing and our heroine is there for a fairly intimate moment. Like, I don't want to spoil it for you, and I don't really know how to define exactly what about that scene works for me, but there are very few heroes in romance that I think are my perfect hero, right? I think, like, you have to kind of write your own to, like, get your perfect hero, and I think in reading this book, it got me closer to thinking about, like, okay, if I were to write a hero, like, this is how he would be. I'm not saying that my hero would be just like this one, but again, like, elements and pieces that I've read in other books make me think, like, oh, yeah, that's getting closer and closer to, like, what it is that I personally want, and yeah, I love this book in general, but I really like that 
that one scene and it's nice to have a physical copy to like open up to. I mean, I literally just found it <laughs> because it's all in italics. Um, but yeah, I love this book. I think it's kind of underrated and um, I just, I, I have to have it, have to own it, have to keep it. Another book that I have to keep for a couple of different reasons is City of Bones by Cassandra Clare that had a bunch of cat hair on it because I've had this book for a long time and my shelves um, just kind of get covered in cat hair. So City of Bones was again, one of those like formative books for me. This is a YA fantasy series. I think most people kind of know at this point what <laughs> the Shadowhunters universe is all about, but I read City of Bones my freshman year of high school and I was hooked. I had never read a kind of paranormal urban fantasy quite like this before. I really liked the like angsty tension filled romance between Clary and Jace. Didn't love really where that went, but I really did like that relationship initially. I liked Jace as a hero too, because I'd never really read anyone who again is like kind of self-loathing, but also has a really great sense of humor. I feel like most of the heroes back in the day, Twilight era, were very like stoic and you know, whatever. And Jace was just not like that. And I really, I just liked him a lot. It's a really fun book. It was really meaningful to me at the time and a book that I've reread like multiple, multiple times. Probably I think my most reread book that I would obviously keep this version of it because it's stunning. It is one of the special editions. I think it's a 10 year anniversary edition, which is nuts. I'm so old. It's got the kind of silver embossing on the front and then kind of gold sprayed edges. I think it also has special art on the inside, which I just love. And it's all throughout the book as well. So yeah, definitely did keep this edition and this book just means a lot to me. Next up, we're getting into the territory of books that do not have dust jackets. So I apologize. I'm not going to put dust jackets on the screen because frankly, I'm sorry. I just like, I'm not really feeling it. I'm not really feeling the editing, but Your Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston is a book that I would absolutely have to keep on my shelves. This is a book that I read back in high school. And this was honestly one of the first books that I was required to read for school that had the intended emotional impact. I feel like a lot of the times we are assigned books in school that just are not exciting, books that don't really interest us, books that were just supposed to like go through the metaphors and the themes and whatever and like no no one's really interested in most of the books that we have to read for school but this one was the exception to that this book was fucking fantastic. It is about a woman and her life and how her relationships with men have kind of impacted her life. It's really short. It's not sweet, I would say, but it had moments that made me laugh out loud. It had moments that made me cry. And this is just a book that I think, I, I don't feel like I hear a lot of people talking about. It's a classic, obviously, but this is just a book that I, I know that I would need to keep on my shelves. There are not very many classics that I feel like I would need to hold on to because I'm just not a classics girl, but this one, like this one, is just so fucking good. A book that some might consider a modern classic, uh, it Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. I'm joking. It's not a modern classic, but I do absolutely love this book. It's a book that, again, I have probably talked about too much here on my channel. Definitely don't shut up about, but I just love the relationship dynamic between Piper and Brendan. This is probably my favorite of Tessa Bailey's works. She has quite a few books at this point that I do really enjoy. I really liked Window Shopping. I really like Tools of Engagement, which is right here. But I think of all of Tessa Bailey's books, It Happened One Summer, I mean, it's just like, it's a no-brainer. I don't feel like I need to talk about this one anymore. Moving on. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, this this one, again, it seems like a no-brainer, but maybe it's not, because I think true Sarah J. Mass stands, like, they they would have a really hard time picking just one book from her, right? One series. I think a lot of people would pick Throne of Glass, like, the real SJM girlies, I think, really like uh, Throne of Glass. Me, however, I'm going with the the original, A Court of Mist and Fury. I mean, do I have, it's, it's Rhys and Farrah's book, like, I just, this one's good. I think, I think of all of the books, this one is my favorite for a couple of different reasons. Good not only in the relationship development between Farrah and Reese, not only in how it furthers the plotline forward and has some like interesting little um, Barbie and the Magic of Pegasus kind of moments. Is it Barbie and the Magic of Pegasus I'm thinking about? I don't know. There's one Barbie movie where she like gets stuck in a cauldron and then like has to go find the jam of ice, as my little sister used to call it. I don't know, she goes on quests, right? And there's kind of like a questy little, I don't know, mini quest sort of moment thing with the Court of Mist and Fury. Also, I like that we get to see how Vera's seemingly perfect relationship with Tamlin kind of changes <laughs> as the book goes on. There's just a lot to like here, right? Not everybody's gonna pick an SJM book, I think, for their for their top 20 to keep, but I would be lying to myself if I said that, like, I wouldn't want to revisit this book and that I wouldn't want to keep this on my shelves, because I do. I just, I like it, okay? No apologies. It, it's a keeper. Next up is a YA fantasy that I read. I don't think it was last year. I think it was the year before. And it's a book that after I read it, I immediately purchased it on Amazon because I just knew I wanted to keep it forever because I liked it so much. To me, that kind of signified that like, if I were only to keep 20 books, this would be one of them. Legend Born by Tracy Dion. I fucking love this book. This is a really, in my opinion, interesting and inventive take on the whole Knights of the Round Table thing. This book's about our main character, Brie, who is dealing with the death of her mother and sort of like the emotions surrounding that. She gets admitted in 
into this sort of like pre-college program I believe at UNC Chapel Hill and she's gonna go there over the summer to kind of I don't know like study and I guess further her chances at getting into a really good college and while she's there she gets invited to this sort of like secret society that's sort of Arthurian in nature. She finds out some secrets along the way, secrets about magic and secrets about maybe her heritage and I just fucking loved it. I just picked up Blood Marks. It's over here as well um, and I'm sure if I read that one I'd probably want to sneak that into my top 20 but it is by the same author so anyway I definitely I Legendborn it's just so good. If you haven't read this book yet definitely have to. I've seen like I would say pretty mixed reviews from my friends on this one but I just loved it. To me again like this felt so original and so inventive in a YA space that sometimes can feel a little stale when it comes to fantasy so definitely a keeper. Technically this is going to be 19 books because I actually had both copies of Part of Your World in my stack I believe so <laughs> Uh, forgive me, but also I think it's better if I only really need 19 books rather than 20, right? I mean, need is relative, but we talk about first. Okay, let's talk about Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. This is the UK hardcover, which was so hard to track down. Okay, actually this one wasn't. The third book in the series was hard to track down, but I found two of the UK hardcovers at my local Half Price Books, and I didn't really know at the time like what they were because I'd never seen any books that look like this. They had the original dust jackets on them as well, which I kind of regret getting rid of, but the quality is just so much nicer than and the US hardcovers and like just the font, the way that it feels in the hand, it just it's so much nicer than the US version. Anyway, uh, I would be keeping this book because this, again, is like a romance thing that I like. This book is one of the most original YA fantasies I've ever read. Again, right up there with Legendborn. It follows our main character, Karu, who is a human girl, and she gets kind of caught up into this year long, years long, years long battle between the Chimera and the, I don't know what they call the angels in this, in this series, but uh, you know, it's kind of like an angels versus demons sort of story, but there are so many twists and turns. There is a really fun romantic relationship between Karu and this guy and I don't really know how to describe the series but I read this book for the first time on a day quite like today which is really um, ugly and rainy outside so you know apologies for changing light I didn't say that earlier but I probably should have this book is just I don't know it's formative right it's formative I read this in high school I absolutely loved it I have the whole series and then lastly uh, two books that I think I, I don't want to say I debated these more than others, but okay, let's, let's talk about The Atlas Six <laughs> first. This one I was really on the fence about because I knew I wanted a book like this to keep amongst my 20. I didn't know if it would be this one or Ninth House. I ultimately decided on The Atlas Six for a couple of reasons. One, she's pretty. <laughs> Number two, I think for me, the multi-character sort of like POV or multi-character situation here really tops Ninth House for me. Very similar books, I would say, in terms of the way that they are written and kind of in some of the themes that they're exploring. I mean, if you like Dark Academia books, but you're not super into some of like the older Dark Academia stuff, like <laughs> The Secret History, you want something that has more of like a fantasy kind of bend to it. I think The Atlas Six and Ninth House are very similar in a lot of ways, but I just love the characters in The Atlas Six so much. In Ninth House, you're mostly just following Alex Stern as she's trying to like solve some mysteries. In the Atlas Six, you've got I think six main characters and they're all so different and bring something so different to the table. I just really like this book so I'm actually really excited to get into the Atlas Paradox. It's back there somewhere. Yeah, I think I would have to keep this one because this is just the kind of fantasy that I really like and I feel like I need to find more of these these character studies, I guess, that feel a little semi-pretentious but like still somehow managed to blow me away. Love this book would have to keep it and then lastly this one i kind of debated because there were other books that i was like ah like maybe maybe i would rather have that on my on my shelves if i only had 20 books but I went with um anxious people by frederick Bachman because i don't really have any like feel good non-romances on my list or any like literary type books really like in this pile but anxious people is a book that had a lot of emotional impact on me i think this book is one that is really nice when you are feeling down it talks a lot about like anxiety and forgiveness and kind of your place in the world i think all of frederick bachman's books have such a great message and i think depending on what message you're looking for each of his books is going to work for you in different ways i know a lot of people love bear town i know a lot of people like is it a man called uve i just anxious people is like my frederick bachman book and so i feel like this is one that i would probably want to keep just just for one of those down days I think this and like part of your world are definitely books that I feel like if I'm ever in a bad mood I would definitely need to have near me but yeah those are the 19 books that I would want to keep if I could only keep 19 20 books in the comments down below let me know what books you would keep if you could only keep 20 books or again if you wouldn't want to keep 20 books or you know if you'd only want to keep five books or you have no desire to have any books physically still let me know like what books had an emotional impact on you or books that are just meaningful to you because they're books that you grew up with yeah i'd love to know in the comments down below thanks so much for watching this video i love y'all so much and until next time